The ocean is massive and the creatures lurking beneath its surface can grow to sizes that would be impossible on land. Whales are the largest living creatures in the sea, but these gentle giants were preceded by some of the scariest sea monsters of all time. Here is the list of 10 most horrifying sea monsters to ever terrorize the ocean. This huge, about 30 feet long and 3 or 4 tons armor-covered prehistoric fish was probably the largest vertebrate of its day and almost certainly the largest fish of the Devonian seas. Dunkleosteus likely resembled a large underwater tank with a thick body, bulging head and massive toothless jaws. Because so many fossils of Dunkleosteus have been discovered, paleontologists know a good deal about the behavior and physiology of these prehistoric fish. For example, there is some evidence that individuals of this genus occasionally cannibalized each other when prey fish ran low, and an analysis of Dunkleosteus jawbones has demonstrated that this vertebrate could bite with a force of about 8,000 pounds per square inch putting it in a league with both the much later Tyrannosaurus rex and the much later giant shark Megalodon. Given the new worldwide success of Dunkleosteus 360 million years ago, the obvious question presents itself. Why did this armor fish go extinct by the start of the Carboniferous period, along with its placoderm cousins? The most likely explanation is that these vertebrates succumbed to changes in ocean conditions during the so-called Hangenberg event, which caused marine oxygen levels to plunge, an event that definitely would not have favored multi-ton fish like Dunkleosteus. Secondarily, Dunkleosteus and its fellow placoderms may have been outcompeted by smaller, slicker bony fish and sharks, which went on to dominate the world's oceans for tens of millions of years thereafter, until the advent of the marine reptiles of the Mesozoic era. Terrorizing the seas nearly 300 million years ago, the Helicoprion was a bizarre species of shark that sported one of the craziest sets of teeth in natural history. This unusual feature has been the subject of widespread debate in the scientific community for a century, and it's easy to see why. The only fossils that have been found of this animal contain sets of spiral teeth, and scientists are still trying to figure out just how they would have possibly fit into the shark's mouth. What they do know is that like many modern sharks, the Helicoprium most likely had to replace their teeth pretty regularly. And although many illustrations show the Helicoprium with a bus saw mouth, some scientists believe that the tooth spiral may have actually been located inside the shark's throat. Others claim it was more likely a ratfish than a shark, with its teeth positioned at the rear of its jaw. Stetacanthus is a prehistoric shark which lived from the late Devonian to the early Carboniferous period about 390 to 320 million years ago. It was first discovered in the 19th century and was named by John Strong Newbery in 1889. Fossils of this shark have been found all over China, Europe, North America and Russia. If you had to judge this shark on its Stetacanthus pictures alone, then you would think it was one strange marine animal. That's because it not only had little spikes on its head, but the males also had an ironing board shaped fin that jitted from their back and contained more little spikes on it. For the longest time, scientists couldn't figure out what this growth was for. Then, after a little more study, they realized it was a way for males to dock with females during mating. Stetacanthus was about 2 to 3 feet long and weighed approximately 20 pounds. One of the most interesting facts about Stetacanthus is that many scientists are speculating that they might have been bottom feeders. Jackalopterus reigned as an apex predator nearly 400 million years ago and was probably willing to eat anything smaller than itself including members of its own species. These arthropods grew to over 8 feet long and had huge spiked claws that could ensnare fish with ease. Experts believe the Jackalopterus ambushed prey with its claws before tearing the meal apart. Jackalopterus is the largest discovered species of arthropod, a group that includes insects, lobsters and crabs. The fact that you are a big means you are more likely to be seen and to be taken for a tastier morsel. Evolution will not select for large size, you want to be small so you can hide away. The scorpions are thought to have made their first scuttles onto land about 450 million years ago, while some would have taken up a fully terrestrial existence, others like Jackalopterus would have maintained an aquatic or semi-aquatic lifestyle. Named after Herman Melville, the author of Moby Dick, Leviathan Melville was a massive species of sperm whale that is believed to have preyed on primarily baleen whales. 
This creature lived only 12 to 13 million years ago, which is frighteningly recent when it comes to the span of geological time. And while it's estimated to have been about the size of a modern sperm whale, it had foot long teeth that suggest its food of choice was quite a bit bigger than your average squid. Modern sperm whales hunt by using suction, basically sucking prey directly into their giant mouth. The Leviathan, however, most likely hunted in a fashion similar to that of orca whales, biting and tearing at their prey. And yes, a human being could easily fit inside of Leviathan's mouth, making the whale in Melville's beloved novel seem a lot less fictional. The Liopleuridon was a giant marine reptile and one of the fiercest predators of the Jurassic period. These massive sea monsters could grow up to 30 feet in length, although some fossils suggest even larger sizes and had sizable teeth that would have made a quick meal out of most marine lives. How did the remains of Liopleuridon wash up in France of all places? Well, during the late Jurassic period, 160 to 150 million years ago, much of present-day Western Europe was covered by a shallow body of water, well stocked with plesiosaurs and pylosaurs. To judge by its weight, up to 10 tons for a full-grown adult, Liopleuridon was clearly the apex predator of its marine ecosystem, relentlessly goblin fish, squids and other smaller marine reptiles. Despite its size, scientists estimate this reptile probably swam surprisingly fast and like many sharks, Liopleuridon had an excellent sense of smell, which it used to locate prey. Plesiosaurs are made up of more than one species and lived about 135 million years ago. These long-necked predators served as the main inspiration for the infamous Loch Ness Monster, and their unique anatomy has placed it at the center of controversy in the scientific community. Plesiosaurs had a wide distribution in European seas and around the Pacific Ocean, including Australia, North America and Asia. Some forms, known from North America and elsewhere, persisted until near the end of the Cretaceous period, 65.5 million years ago. Plesiosaur was about 4.5 meters, 15 feet long, with a broad, flat body and a relatively short tail. It swam by flapping its fins in the water, much as sea lions do today, in a modified style of underwater flight. The nostrils were located far back on the head near the eyes. The neck was long and flexible and the animal may have fed by swinging its head from side to side through schools of fish, capturing prey by using the long, sharp teeth present in the jaws. This ocean-dwelling creature is from the late Cretaceous period, 70 to 65 million years ago. Its distinguishing characteristics included a blunt, alligator-like head, fin on the end of its tail, and a hydrodynamic build. It was large, up to 15 feet long and weighing 15 tons, and subsisted on a diet of fish, squid and shellfish. The remains of Mosasaurus were discovered well before educated society knew anything about evolution, dinosaurs or marine reptiles in a mine in Holland in the late 18th century. Mosasaurs were only distantly related to the Pliosaurs and Plesiosaurs that preceded them and which they largely supplanted from the dominance of the world's oceans during the late Cretaceous period. The Mosasaurs themselves went extinct 65 million years ago, along with their dinosaur and pterosaur cousins, by which time they may have already been succumbing to competition from better adapted sharks. Another of Mary Anning's discoveries was the ichthyosaurs, a marine reptile that looked eerily similar to a modern-day dolphin. This is due to a process known as convergent evolution, which happens when species that are not related to each other evolve to have similar body shapes. Ichthyosaurs had a very wide geographic distribution and their fossil remains span almost the entire Mesozoic era, 251 million to 65.5 million years ago, but they were most abundant and diverse during the Triassic and Jurassic period, 251 million to 145.5 million years ago. Excellent fossil specimens secure in the fine-grained early Jurassic shales of southern Germany. If you look at ichthyosaurus pictures, then you might mistake this animal for a prehistoric dolphin or maybe an ancient tuna. However, those assumptions would be false. This animal was actually a marine reptile, which was extremely well adapted to the ocean. It had a streamlined body, a small sail fin on its back, and it had well-designed flippers. This allowed it to really swim at high speeds through the water. Most likely, it was probably able to reach speeds of about 21 miles per hour, which is about the speed of a modern dolphin today. 
One of the most interesting facts about ichthyosaurs is that it had large ear bones. Paleontologists believe this was an adaptation that not only allowed them to locate fish by listening for their arrival through the water, but also was a way for them to listen to predators that may be approaching. Measuring at more than 50 feet long, the Megalodon was the largest known shark of all time. Their jaws alone were large enough for a full-grown person to walk through with ease, and they used those jaws to hunt whales. Scientists believe that Megalodons hunted whales by first ripping off their tails and fins, immobilizing their prey so they could more easily fist. It's also believed that the extinction of these giant sharks is what allowed whales to reach the enormous sizes that they are known for today. Researchers confirmed that the last Megalodon died only 2.6 million years ago, right around the same time the evolution of the first humans began to take place.